Living in the digital age requires that we accept the fact that each one of us, in addition to our physical self, has a digital twin. The distinction is real and very important when it comes to how our personal data is collected and used. Unfortunately, our digital twin does not enjoy the same level of privilege and protection created through centuries of thought and the practice of social theory. For example, in the state of Utah, if you have medical insurance and you see a doctor or fill a prescription, a copy of that prescription and the encounter with your physician are automatically sent to the Department of Health to be included in a massive data set called the All Payer Claims Database. Your consent for the collection of these records is not obtained, and you cannot opt out. As conspiratorial and big brother as it sounds, what I've just told you is not a secret government program. It is, in fact, part of a national movement of states and insurance companies operating similar databases looking to advance the goals of healthcare affordability, efficiency, and cost transparency. In this era of constant data breaches and identity theft, many of us are as likely to have a free credit monitoring service as we are to have a video streaming service. As a society, we understand that our personal data is valuable, but in most cases, we have no idea how it is collected and used by corporations. When we talk about government data collection, there is an immediate reaction of distrust and conspiracy, which ultimately leads to a lack of faith in digital government service delivery. This mistrust often manifests itself in poorly written legislation, generally addressing only data privacy. And without clear and understandable laws, bureaucratic interpretation leads to systems which are highly ineffective, costly, and a poor user experience for people desperately trying to get the benefits to which they are entitled. Why is it, at the height of the digital age, a woman applying for the Women, Infants, and Children program called WIC, who based on income alone is likely eligible for the Children's Health Insurance program, must apply separately for each service, supplying, in most cases, the exact same information. If she needs housing assistance, we give her another form. And the cycle continues. Bureaucratic technology has twisted traditional red tape into a tangled mess that frustrates, confuses, and tragically hurts those who need the most help. Advocates for vulnerable people have related to me cases of where individuals have gone without basic necessities, such as food assistance, because they were unsuccessful in navigating the systems. Now, on a positive note, there are many civil servant technologists working today to tackle this problem. And there are emerging technology platforms, collectively called citizen portals, which hope to address governmental inefficiencies by providing easier access to critical systems and services. However, they will ultimately fail to provide the expected value until the issues of privacy, data sharing, and transparency are dealt with. In our physical world, our ever-evolving social contract has created laws and a body of rights which govern expectations of conduct and interaction and have led to a system of checks and balances. Some will argue that laws and body of regulations exist to protect the digital citizen, such as the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, commonly known as HIPAA, and they are right to some extent. There is an alphabet soup of acronyms out there designed to keep our digital twin alive and healthy. But throwing terms into our discussion like IRS Pub 1075, CEGIS, FERPA, VIPA, COPPA, and GRAMMA are more likely to confuse you than give you the assurance your personal data is safe. Categorically, your digital self matters and deserves the dignity of being protected by clear and concise means. The march forward in online government services can no longer ignore the need for digital self-determination. And the first step on that journey is a Bill of Rights. Creating a Bill of Rights for our digital twin will encompass many issues and will need refinement over time. For today, let's address three core tenets that, if adopted, will lay a foundation for future trust and government transparency. Our first digital right is very simple. We have the right to know what data the government holds about us. 
The desire of governments to collect and correlate personal data continues to grow. And as machine learning and artificial intelligence are seeing real gains in providing insights into populations, it is more important than ever that we ensure that our data is not misused. Preventing misuse must come from a position of knowledge. And today, for the most part, our digital twin is blind to what data is actually out there. Which leads to our second right. We have the right to audit when our data is used or accessed by a government agency, and our consent should be obtained before transferring our personal data to an outside party. With a comprehensive log of transactions, we bring government operations into the light for an open discussion. And the crowdsourcing dialogue allows society to determine what is an appropriate use for our data versus relying on a bureaucrat or a legislator's personal agenda. And rounding out these important concepts, our third right. We have the right to have our data destroyed when the legal purpose of the data has been satisfied. Does the government really need copies of my parking tickets from 1998? I don't think so. Many states are starting to look at the concept of clean slate laws to deal with problems similar to this, but they only deal with specific data sets. As a society, we need to push for a more comprehensive approach to data management. Just because an entire warehouse of paper records can fit on a cheap hard drive doesn't mean the data should hang around forever. In making the case for our Digital Bill of Rights, we also need to acknowledge that governments cannot be effective without quality data. Obviously, our digital rights should never be infringed, but we do need to strike a balance between our own personal data protection and harming others through a lack of good data. And I'll explain this by coming full circle to the all-payer claims database. In telling you about this database, I've helped you exercise your first digital right to know about your data. And that is where the dialogue starts. Why does this system even exist? Well, the answers are actually quite simple, and the data itself makes the case. Disparities in healthcare outcomes are much easier to detect in large population samples. And the correlation of this data has the potential to improve the quality of life for patients suffering from the same medical condition, but are treated with different drugs. And the cost of medical procedures can be evaluated and recommendations made which lower costs. These are a few of the many benefits available from having data that the government can analyze on behalf of everyone. If you could opt out of the system, the smaller sample size would degrade the statistical significance. This data helps identify many issues surrounding healthcare, and there are other data sources which could provide a better picture of how to help people. For example, the concept of social determinants of health implies that factors outside the healthcare system, such as racism and economic disparities, have a direct impact on the health outcomes of individuals. As the IT director for the Department of Health at the height of the pandemic, I witnessed instances of populations being underserved due to a variety of reasons, such as language barriers, distrust of government, and the undocumented status of individuals. Of course, my observations are anecdotal at best. In order to validate these assumptions and effectively deal with the problems, requires more data sharing and correlation inside government than we can do today due to underfunded IT systems and existing legislation. But these are very solvable problems. It just requires the will of the people to be known. If we could rally together to secure this digital bill of rights for ourselves and society as a whole, imagine the good that could come of it. I look forward to a future day when a woman applying for WIC puts in her information only once, and then by providing consent to share her data, gets access to a whole host of services for herself and for her children that aids her on a more dignified journey to self-sufficiency. And today's disconnected maze of services, which often treats the individual as a stigmatized benefit seeker, is a distant memory. Now, as a technologist, I would love to tell you that technology will solve the problems. 
but it won't. The truth is, society needs to evolve. And the time for an upgrade to our social contract to include our digital twin is now. And the beauty is, the power to make this change a reality exists in the palm of your hand. Your smartphone is where you literally pass the torch to your digital twin. So take to social media and let your twin speak loudly about the need for these fundamental changes. And don't stop there. Government has no incentive to change unless many voices are heard. Online petitions and email campaigns directed to legislators at a state and national level have a greater impact than you might think. Working together, we can secure this digital bill of rights for ourselves and society as a whole. In conclusion, I want you to realize that your digital twin is actually a storyteller, weaving together tales created from the snippets of data collected about you. What goes into your personal narrative is a mystery that today you cannot solve. Are you written into the story as the hero or the villain? Without appropriate visibility, you'll never know. We all strive to be masters of our own destiny and to tell our stories in our own voices as we write the chapters of our lives. And it is safe to say that your twin will outlive you. So how the story plays out is extremely important. Will you accept the challenge to become the author and editor of your life story? Or will you continue to allow it to be ghostwritten by the data you've never seen? The choice is yours.